Does your RTO 2000 oscilloscope have DRAM artifacts? Well, I'm gonna help you with those. So first we're gonna make sure that they are in fact DRAM artifacts. Yours might have a different amplitude, uh, but you're going to, with the key characteristic here is that you're going to notice that the amplitude is, is constant uh, and it, it kind of stays, uh, uh, stays constant. It might flip direction, but uh, the amplitude stays, uh, stays constant. Um, and that this amplitude is independent of scale settings. So I'm changing the number of volts uh, tall that those artifacts are, but uh, they, they stay the same size on the screen no matter what the scale is. Um, so that's the first indication. And the second uh, key indication uh, is that if you measure between adjacent artifacts, uh, you'll note that uh, the timing is 1.4 nanoseconds. So once you verify those two things, 1.4 nanosecond timing and consistent amplitude, maybe different than mine, but it's consistent uh, within your scope, then you know that you have DRAM artifacts. Okay, so there are 14 plausible chips uh, that could be at fault if you have DRAM artifacts, and I'm gonna tell you which one it is. So here's what you're gonna do. First step is you're going to make sure that both channels are active in whichever bank has the artifacts. Now, uh, my artifacts uh, were in the, 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 the first, uh, first set of channels here, so that means channel one and channel two for me. Uh, it might be channel three and channel four for you. You're gonna make sure those two channels and only those two channels are active. Now, if your artifacts were on channel three uh, and you had only channels three and four active, you would also need to move the trigger uh, off of channel one and onto channel three. We want uh, the two, uh, the two channel, the two channels in the banks without the artifact. We want those inactive, and we want the two channels in the bank active. All right, so we've got that set. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to stop the scope when we've got an artifact in the first position after the origin here. So, like you, you run this, you run the scope, uh, you figure out what what that position is, first position past the origin or on the origin, um, and then you you go into history mode and you scroll until you capture one in that position. There we go. All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna zoom in on that artifact and you're gonna drop a cursor. Oh, and if the artifact disappears here, um, it's a DRAM artifact. It can appear on the way to the chip or on the way from the chip. Uh, so if it disappears here, just, just you know, fiddle around, with, uh, uh, fiddle around with the positioning until it comes back. It'll come back. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop a cursor, measure from the origin to your artifact and you're going to look at the picoseconds. Here we have 600 picoseconds. That's gonna be our key. Um, now, I didn't have a key when I started this, uh, so what I did is I, I made cuts. I induced artifacts into these DRAM chips one at a time so that I could figure out which was which, but um, I had bad enough luck uh, in this process uh, that I think I uh, mapped out the entire pattern of these chips, and so I can just tell you which one to jump to. All right, so 600 picoseconds is what we measured. 600 picoseconds, no, 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 no. No, 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 yes. Yes, this is the chip, 600 picoseconds. Now you'll also notice that there's a green check mark on that chip. That green check mark uh, means that I actually physically verified this. I cut a trace on that chip and observed that cutting the trace induced an artifact on that chip. So the green check mark chips have very high confidence. Um, the ones without green check marks uh, you know, I, I think that I've, cut, I've, I, I've verified enough chips that I think I see the pattern. So, I, I mean, I have reasonable confidence on, on those chips. And in any case, this is where you're wanting to start, probably with uh, my educated guess here. Um, but the green chips have, uh, have very high confidence. And uh, so take the, the picoseconds that you measured, look up the chip, and that's the chip that uh, you're going to need to uh, remove and uh, reball a new one, replace it. And uh, <laughs> easy peasy, right? Right? Well, uh, I'll, let's, let's just, I'll wish you the best of luck and uh, you wish me the best of luck because I still have to actually do this. Yeah. Well, hey, at least you know the timing now. Good luck. John out.